Okay, so we're just going to give you a real quick um, body condition scoring demonstration. There's plenty of information on the um, Beef and Lamb website, so we're going to go through it uh, pretty quick. And obviously, you can't be here to actually feel the sheep, but just to give you a, a feel of uh, how quick and what sort of um, how long how long it should take. So here today, um, we've got the Omaha ewes here, and we've effectively just got mixed age ewes and. Sully actually made the call um, after it rained to build a bit of feed. He boxed up uh, his tutus, which if you pan across to Ellen, um, uh, the ones with the yellow tag, the yellow uh, sort of flexi tag. So yeah, we've got mixed age use here and, um, and tutu use. And basically, that, that's a snapshot of, his, um, of one of his mobs. That's uh, before we've um, condition scored them. So, um, you know, to view like this in their wool, they look, um, you know, they don't look too bad considering how dry it's been. So we'll get, get them up the race. A um, couple of key things when you're, when you're doing this. Um, if you're by yourself, try use a single man race. It's pretty difficult in a, in a two man race. Don't push them up the race too tight because uh, they don't naturally sort of lie. They might cramp up or jump on each other and you don't get a real good, good feel. Um, so yeah, and just the, the key with this is um, it's not a perfect science. Um, if you go out there to get it 100% accurate, accurate, it'll become a chore. Um, you know, you, you'll never get it fully right, just all, all we're looking for is, um, is she a condition score 3 or not? Um, and if she's, you know, if she's over, we don't chalk her, if she's under, we, we chalk her. Okay, so, just quick and dirty condition scoring, what we're feeling for is the, uh, is the cover over the short ribs, or, or the horizontal processes, so we're just feeling in one place, uh, very quick, and we're thinking, once you know what a condition score 3 is, is she in or is she out? Um, today we're choosing to chalk them on the nose, just because that's, Sully's already got enough colour on their, on their backs from the crayon. Um, some people just will mark it with a chalk on the rump. Um, so one spot, the short ribs, you'll see a slide flick up on the video at the moment to, to show you where, where your condition scoring. Um, chalk in the hand, both going through, and yeah, if she's below 3, we're marking her on the nose. So just because I've got the tutus in here, I go a little bit lighter on the tutus. Like you know, a light tutus and a light mixed stage is a different different thing for me. I reckon the key thing for condition scoring is try not to think about it too much. If you overthink it, you sort of get all lost with yourself. Where you just put your hand on them, is it in or is it out? Make a call quickly. Yeah. And you can actually get through the sheet quite fast. So all we're, all we're feeling is the, um, is the short ribs. And we've also got our thumb across the backbone as well. And, and um, yeah, we're feeling for, for cover, how much fat covers over the, over the short ribs and the, and the backbone. So for me, the good thing about a drought, if there is a good thing, is it's dry underfoot and it's warm. If you're gonna push ewes, now's a real good time to push them. But for me, up until now, I haven't known what these ewes are quite like. So I've been a bit nervous about really pushing them hard, you know, just leaving them in that paddock an extra day, gaining a bit of ground. So the best thing you can do is get them in the yards, get the fat ones out, you know which ones you can push a bit harder, and you can start to build some covers. And I, I think that's absolutely key. Um, you know, when you're driving along and you look across the gully at this time of the year, like pretty much we're day 40 for Sully. So 40 days since the ram out, he's removed the rams. So we're done and dusted. Um, now he's slowing them right down and trying to save feed. And if we have the light ones out, so the ones below three that we know we've got to lift up before lambing, he then knows if he's driving along the farm, he looks across the gully and he sees a paddock's gone off colour a bit and he's sort of sitting there going, ooh, do they need a shift? If he knows categorically that those ewes can hack, you know, just the maintenance and he's got his light ones out, then he can just keep on driving and crimp a few days here and there. And that's that's the key, because if you start trying to push ewes and you haven't taken a tail out, you're just going to get a bigger and bigger tail that comes through at scanning, and you have too much work to do at scanning time. So your best just to keep recycling the tail in a season like this, and know which ewes you can actually push. I think that's probably a theme of today, is if you've got that information, you can use it to your advantage really well. If you don't have that information, you know, it makes it harder to make real confident decisions, and... Um, just by doing this, I think we've done um, 930 odd ewes in about two hours. It's, it's not actually that big a job. Um, just by doing this, it's gonna give me so much more confidence 
of how I'm treating these sheep and I'll be able to build some covers going forward. The winter will be better, lambing will be better, next weaning will be better and I just keep kicking right on next, next year instead of letting this drought drag on for two or three years to come. And I'd, I'd, um, I'd challenge anyone to draft these ewes on the gate. You know, with this much wool on them, you're going to get the real fats and you're going to get the really skinnies, but there's no way you can fine-tune that condition scoring on the, on the drafting gate. Here's the ones that Sully and I have uh, quickly gone through. Um, so all these girls here are, are uh, below three. Below body condition score three. Some are, some are just off. Um, yeah, some are, some are just off. Um, and some are sort of like a two and a half. But basically, keep it simple. All we have in our head is, is she a three or not? And I'll explain why we need that, that holy growl. Is that three? Is she a three or not? If she isn't, we, we chalked her and she's out. Um, and you can see out, the, see out the door here, we've got our, our mob that we've uh, been condition scoring all morning. I mean, to view these ewes, you know, they, they don't look too bad, but once you put the hand on them, there's a bit of work to do. Um, and today, out of our ewes, we've had uh, about 40% of our ewes below condition score three that we uh, are going to treat preferentially. Righto, so I fully endorse everything Richmond's talked about here. Um, and you know, in my years as a consultant, I certainly preach this a lot, and I, I fully believe it. How I'm going to, or how I usually attack this, is now that I've got those those fat ewes out, and I've got my light ewes, I know who's who. Um, where are we now? We're rams just come out, so I don't really need to feed anything well. So that will go into a pretty pretty long rotation right through till scanning. So I'm still trying to feed that tail in pretty well. The uh, the fatter ewes will be, you know, I'll be squeezing days out of paddocks everywhere I can. The more days I can pinch here, the easier it is later on. I think the important thing is I have to, those light ewes, I don't really get another shot of putting weight on them. Once you get through to scanning from there forward, she's pretty tough going putting any weight on you. So now's my opportunity with those. I'm going to steal some feed off the fat ones to put into the light ones. Um, and the, I'll do that through, I've got about 20 paddocks on the hills there. Best case scenario, I'll get about three days in each paddock, that's 60 days, that gets me through to scanning. And that means I'm gonna have a bunch of paddocks that haven't had anything in them for 60 days. So you know you're gonna have a bit of feed come scanning time. Once I get to scanning, I'll go through my use again then, as Richmond said, going into the crate. And also, I use a harness here, but get your scanner to pull off lates. That's terribly valuable little mob of sheep, those late ewes. Um, and from, the, from scanning forward, I know um, you're supposed to feed them pretty well from like, pretty much from scanning onwards. Reality is that's quite hard to do, so I'll probably keep them in a biggish mob um, right through maybe till July, start of July. And then from there, so I'm just trying to keep those covers in front of me, keep those covers in front of me. And remember maintenance means maintenance, maintaining you. Somehow maintenance seems to mean losing weight for a lot of people. Um, so I'll just gen genuinely maintain those ewes right through to about the, the um, I don't know, the, the start of July. Uh, from there, I'll have some pretty good covers. I know I'll have 60 days worth of grass in some paddocks. Um, you know, 20 paddocks times three days, 60 days worth of grass. Um, from there, I'm quite happy to break things down into a lot smaller mobs. So it'll be, you know, your triplets and your light twins in a mob, your twins in a mob, singles and lates in another mob, and they'll get fed accordingly. I don't mind getting to set stocking with shortish covers, as long as I've got big fat ewes and I'll get some nitrogen under those ewes and, and I know that that system will work for me. I know, best case scenario, you have fat ewes and covers. The real, reality of that for a lot of people in a, in a normal farming year, let alone coming out of a drought, is it's quite hard to achieve. So if I'm compromising on one, it's past your covers at set stocking. But I know I'm still going to get the set stocking, you know, 1,300, 1,400 covers, and I'm pretty happy at that. 